Go. Good morning. Uh, this is the uh, duly scheduled and noticed meeting of the Advisory Committee of Non-Boarding Taxpayers. It is uh, uh, slightly after 10 a.m. Saturday, uh, the 2nd of March. And um, I'm Peter Halley, the, uh, the chair. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the meeting is being audio and video recorded. Uh, just remember that um, anything you say or do or that's in the background of your screens uh, will be recorded for posterity and probably posted on a public uh, viewing channel uh, so that if you have any privacy concerns, you are welcome to, you know, blank out your, uh, uh, your, your picture uh, and, uh, and then uh, moderate any comments that you may have uh, accordingly, because everything is being recorded. I will uh, call on members of the committee first uh, as we have our discussions, and then there will be an opportunity for public comment after the committee members have uh, made their, their comments. And uh, so I think with those uh, uh, sort of rules, uh, I guess in addition, if you have some question that a person wants to ask another committee member, please ask through me and I will recognize you. Uh, also, um, as I'm not particularly vigilant and I won't see every hand that's raised, if I don't seem to be responding to your raised hand, uh, say something <clears throat> and I will uh, do that as well. Uh, so the membership, so those are the ground rules. Uh, membership count for quorum, I'll just go Kathy Baird is here. Uh, here, obviously. Lou Bassano, is Lou here? No, Gary Beller is here. here. Gary? Here. Bookman? Yes. Yep, okay. Uh, Patty uh, Duster? No. Lynn Flipsky, I see Lynn. Yes. Gardner, I hear Bill. Here, yeah. Don Green? No. Uh, I'm here, Peter Kahn, are you with us yet? Not yet. Yes, he's here. He's just on mute. Okay. Uh, Ralph Kunsel. No. Donna Martino. Here. Great. Uh, Steve is not with us. Scott All My C. And Pam Swan. Here. Great. Okay. So we have a uh, a quorum and we can proceed. Um, do I? Uh, <laughs> does somebody make a motion for approval of today's agenda? So moved. Uh, any second? Second. Okay. And all those in favor? Uh, aye. Signify by aye. saying aye. aye. Mm -hmm. Anybody aye. opposed? Okay. So I want to proceed. Uh, first item on the agenda is a report from uh, Donna and Pam on the Town Council Study Committee. It's been, I guess, about a month since we've met with each other, and I'm certainly interested to know what's transpired. Peter, um, could we do the minutes first? Move the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> the, the minutes. So it'll take a couple of seconds to do the minutes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. They've been distributed. Uh, and um, any have anybody have any corrections, changes, comments on the minutes? Seeing no hands and hearing no voices. So um, moved. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, it's a motion and second to approve the minutes of the last meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Okay, good. Now, Donna and Pam, you are up. <clears throat> okay, um, if I may. The uh, last uh, town council study committee meeting was held on February 7th. Our next meeting is this Wednesday, March 6th. All are welcome to attend as a guest. Um, in our last meeting on the 7th of February, Libby Gibson addressed our committee on the structure of the Nantucket government as it is today. Um, she addressed us via Zoom. John Giorgio attended, and John gave us his feedback as to what he thought would be the best approach if we decided to change our form of government. And he recommended we amend the charter, 
which was the easiest approach, which would require a special act charter change. Uh, during this meeting, we also had a presentation by the Edward Collins Center for Public Management um, of uh, University of Massachusetts. And the uh, Collins Center seems to be of interest uh, to our committee to become our consultant. And just uh, an FYI about the Collins Center, I didn't know anything about them. So they gave us a, a very lengthy presentation full of information about who they are, um, the number of municipalities which they have helped over the years since 2008. Um, and they have worked in more than two thirds of the Massachusetts 351 municipalities. Their primary areas of focus to give us an idea of their capabilities would be finance, human resources, operations, analytics, recruitment, charter and organizational structure. Um, as I said, uh, Joe Grouse, who is our chair of that committee, is presently in talks with them to become our consultant. Um, also, um, as members of this committee, we are required to attend the Attorney General's um, open law policy, which was uh, this past week, which I did attend, and that's been confirmed. Um, Peter, um, Holly, do you have any uh, composition you wanted to submit to Joe Grouse, our chair, about the possibility of us having a vote as we move forward, perhaps, with this um, Can I have a vote in this committee or in... Uh, TCSC. In we had discussed it before, um, and you were thinking of putting together a, a, a proposal to include us in some sort of the um, voting process. Since right now, as a member I, of that committee, I cannot vote. Yeah, okay. So uh, I don't recall having discussed this at the last meeting. Uh, okay. I do recall, however, having discussed that I would circulate some proposed wording mm -hmm. for the amendment to the charter, what is, what is now being considered to be the amendment to the charter, um, right. which, which I have not done, but I will do. And it, it, you're familiar, I think, I think I sent it to you several months ago. Um, and uh, what I wanna do is go back and look at it and uh, see based on discussions that have been had, whether, um, they that needs to be revised and any comments um, it would be appreciated obviously uh, in thoughts and I think you know what what I will what we should probably do is discuss that in in committee um, and I could uh, you know do up the this for the next I don't, do, do you need these the wording before the next? Town, town Council Study Committee. No, not at all. No, I, I apologize. I, 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 we don't yeah. have a time limit on this. Yeah. It was just something I remembered we had discussed. And since we are talking about it, I wanted yeah. to just- So, so that my, so going back to that, that my recollection, and it may not be correct, um, is that um, we were first excluded or not included uh, from the study committee at all. And uh, I did at that time uh, write to uh, the, um, the, the, the uh, select board and that resulted in us being included. And I, and I asked to be, I think, a voting member at that point, or I might have said voting or non-voting, uh, but we should have a voice in the committee. Um, and uh, at that point, the... Uh, uh, the uh, select board met and took up this proposal and voted to include our uh, uh, committee, a representative from our committee as a member of the Town Council Study Committee, but without a vote uh, as sort of, uh, and, uh, and that was approved. I have not yes. done anything since then uh, to, um, I uh, encourage them to uh, change it to voting membership. And I've not kind of looked at the 
the issue. So I think they wanted to have an uneven number of voting members at that time. Uh, and uh, I think that's what they have now. Uh, and I guess we would need to come up with an additional rationale to whatever I said the last time. Uh, I think I uh, that I circulated my my letter to the uh, the select board uh, last time. But if not, I can do that again. Uh, but what would I, I understand? Voting is better than non-voting, but. Uh, that voting has already, in in a sense, been rejected. Yeah. The question is, what is the next ask? Correct. Yeah. So, I leave that to you. That's Peter. Peter you yeah. Talk? I mean, I think my recollection was of our discussion and where I thought you were headed was that we would discuss what our recommendation would be for uh, with regard to the role, so to speak, of non-voting taxpayers in this new form of government. I think Correct. it's. I think the idea is that you know we, we we would like we would like to have at least if not more um, ability to have our voice heard. We don't expect a vote. I don't think anyone you know I mean, the law doesn't allow for it. So I, I think that's a starter. But I think our positions need to you know we want to make sure that our positions are heard and and dealt with. Uh, so that was what I think we're you know that's what I think is on the table. And you know when you get around to drafting something, well I, I agree we ought to talk about it in committee first and then see where we are. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a first Sounds draft of that, which I did last fall, I think sometime in October, as I recall, and um, and I've not I've not yet circulated that to uh, the entire committee, and so that it's probably appropriate for me to do that now. And what I will do is do it through the secretary, through Kathy, and uh, I we have to look at what the open government laws require. But I, I, my sense is that uh, they'll probably need to become a part of the minutes uh, at some point in the future, so that other, other people can see them and make comment on them, what what have you. Pam has her hand up, Peter. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Peter, I wouldn't stress about it right now. I think this is kind of premature. Um, I think the committee is really thoughtful and really going through all the components, as Donna would. I'm sure has reported. And I think we are, I think as we get closer to seeing what the structure might look like, what the size of the governing body might look like, that we will find a path for our committee to express some of our desires. Um, but right now, I think that um, we're very appreciative that as part of that committee, we're involved, we're discussing, we're being heard. I mean, Donna, do you feel like, I feel like they're very open to the things that we talk about and and it's really moving well. Um, I would second that. Um, the only reason I brought this up is that from the last conversation. So I just like it to be on the table. Yeah. Um, Joe, uh, Joe Grouse and the committee members, uh, I speak often at every meeting. Um, I am included and representing our group. So it has been a very satisfying um, opportunity for us. As a, as a committee ourselves. Um, I would like to um, ask the committee if they have any questions, if that is appropriate at this point, Peter. Yeah, that, that is good. Yeah, yeah, if anybody has a, something yeah. that, uh, you know, yes, go ahead, Gary. Yeah, why don't, why don't you just inform us about the current thinking of the timetable, whether this is something that might happen at a special meeting in 2024 at the end of the year, or maybe the regular annual ATM in 2025. What's the committee thinking now about when something might be ready to be presented to the uh, uh, voters? Um, according to what Joe is saying and the rest of the committee members, um, we're not ready to have, well, Curtis is here and Curtis certainly has had many years of experience in the government. And I defer, I defer to you as well, Curtis. Chime in, you know, if you'd like. But um, there isn't a set timetable yet. Definitely not 2024. Um, and I have a feeling because of the capabilities of the Collins Institute, if we do so decide to employ them as our consultants, then they will kind of help speed things along. But uh, I open it up to Curtis if you'd like to add more information. 
You are mute, Curtis. Well, um, I think Donna's really um, said it well. And um, uh, actually, I think our next meeting this coming week, we will be talking more about what the Collins people can do. And that may help us set a timetable. I certainly don't think it's going to come up in the 2024 annual town meeting as now scheduled. Good. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, the, well, I, I must say, I'm, it, it sounds like the committee is making some progress and moving mm -hmm. in, a, in a direction. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, too, don't know anything about the University of Mass group, but uh, it sounds like an, a logical uh, step. Uh, it, it, as I understand it, and, and correct me if, if if uh, correct me if necessary um this special it, it's basically a two-step approach now that first there needs to be an amendment to the charter uh that um changes the form of government in in the, the, all the ways that uh, it, it's recommended that it be changed uh, and then as part of that step the uh, the town meeting, a town meeting in the future, would need to approve that, you know, subject to amendment and all the rest of it. And uh, once that is done, then uh, it has to go to the legislature uh, for a, a legislative approval, a kind of an enactment of a new charter, I guess, uh, or new amended charter. Yeah, go ahead. Amended charter. Yeah. It would then have to go back for an affirmative vote at a town election in addition to the legislature's approval. Okay, and a town election is different from a town meeting, is that right? It's that uh, correct. Yeah, yeah, so so this is uh, several years down the road, and I, it sounds to me like the, assuming that the town council study committee, you know, continues to gain speed, move ahead and gets the advice that it needs, that this might, you know, optimistically come up by the 25 town meeting. Um, but then it's the legislature that really becomes the question mark because as we've seen from the last, uh, our last meeting, there are some things that have been passed by the town meeting that the legislature hasn't taken up for three years. Um, and, and so uh, I guess part of that process will be um, lobbying, uh, you know, fair amount of, you know, first of all, our representative or representatives, uh, I guess there are two houses, um, need to be fully on board. And then uh, uh, yeah, it seems to me that other people will have to interest other members of the legislature to uh, bring this to a vote. But that, that's the best, best we can do is get this to the town meeting uh, and you know, get, get it ready for the legislature. Um, and it sounds like that's the direction that it's headed, which is great. Um, and whatever it is still to be defined uh, by the members of the committee uh, and ultimately by the town meeting. Okay, anything else on, on this? I, I thank you, Donna and Pam, uh, um, for uh, being part of this and uh, making a contribution and uh, I look forward to sharing your success in the future. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, I think we're, we're good on this. Uh, and uh, the next one is uh, uh, the Advisory Committee on Bike Safety. I know Lynn had brought up a whole host of things the last time, um, as I recall, involving uh, change in signage and what have you. Uh, and uh, has there been any movement on that? Um, they have elected a chair. So Ian Golding is now the chair of Bike Safety which is an excellent start. Um, they're coordinating with the Chamber of Commerce, the Land Bank, NCF, and the town with communicating um, where e-bikes are prohibited, which will be natural surfaces. So you can't take um, a bike into that property and speed around on a, on a path. So that was their first focus. But they are encouraging all bike registration um, for the island so that you will get a sticker for your helmet and you will um, potentially 
it could be free to register. They're still debating this, but by giving you a sticker and registering with you, they can review the rules. And especially for e-bikes, that's kind of important and to keep a track of how many are around. So this whole idea of education is now at the forefront of Mike Burns' um, initiatives. So the, they will update the safety brochure that officer Kevin Marshall used to give to the schools. So I think the outreach will be very strong in the schools and perhaps the civic association, the 25 associations can also be included in this. So the next um, discussion is really about who's going to give tickets. And their first thought was Jeff Carlson. Um, Benny, Jeff doesn't really have the time or the manpower for this. But the key is educating um, people at the consumer level of bike shops and just having the town make this uh, a, a bigger campaign so that we, we see things be safer. They're going to talk about the signage at the next meeting. So, uh, you know, this will be continued and I'll have more information on that. But the registration of e-bikes has been their, their focus and where e-bikes can go and at what speed. So I will keep you posted. Okay, so so let me just ask, um, this wasn't entirely clear to me. Um, the registration is just for e-bikes or for all bikes? All bikes. All but especially e-bikes, because e-bikes haven't been registered in this way. And if we make it free, then there's no ability to say it's too expensive, it's not worth it. I yeah. think now registration fee is something like $2.50. So this isn't something um, meant to encumber anyone. So it's a it's a way to outreach and educate and create better safety for bike paths themselves to keep a, a class, you know, two bike that can go the speed limit shouldn't be on bike path. Yeah. And class three bikes aren't allowed anywhere on a path. Yeah. And, and so then natural surfaces, uh, what is the definition of a natural surface? For example, I have a dirt road in front of my house. Is that a natural surface? Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's a good question. I, I think they're trying to use this as a way to delineate conservation properties separately from the bike path. And obviously the shell roads and the dirt path roads are ubiquitous on Nantucket. So um, that is the first thing you might want to add to their list of defined surface naturally yeah, yeah. cuz it, it yeah you would not be able to use your bike place other than a, on a paved road yeah. which, it's which, it's really for conservation areas because yeah. that would create a lot of havoc yeah good and it, it, i i guess the the conservation areas which are under under some sort of management the existing management doesn't have the ability uh, and I don't mean to put anybody on the spot, but uh, you know, to put a sign out and say uh, bicycles not allowed uh, on this property or something like that, which they, they certainly do. But this is just to codify it yeah. um, and, and make it really a written down law. So uh, I, I think if if they want to put a sign, they can. I think the Sconset Trust will add to that since they have a very large property that has um, natural surfaces. So it, it's a good measure in, in terms of keeping everyone safely using resources. Good. Thank you. Any any other questions or observations uh, for Peter? Lynn? Yeah. Um, is this just for Lynn? Um, is this like an annual or a sticker or a one-time sticker? Is there any inspection of your bicycle in, in this? Um, no inspection was mentioned. Um, I think once your bike is registered, it's registered. Um, so I would say it's not annual. Um, they didn't delineate annual or it's really one time to get the ability to educate someone on and when they have a bike. It'll be a little bit harder to do with someone who rents for a month. You know, are they part of this registration process? Um, it's helpful if your bike was stolen and it's registered and they have a record of it, 
which does seem to happen um, uh, from time to time on the island. But I, I think the answer is it's a one-time deal. You mentioned that you put the sticker on your helmet rather than on the bike. Is that? Um, yes. So Mike, Mike thinks that he wouldn't sh share the design. It's supposed to be very cool. And you as an adult may want this on your helmet as well. Um, they want adults to wear helmets. That's not the law. It's 16 and under. But um, they're trying to make it a cool thing to do. So that, that'll be an interesting hurdle. Yeah, I mean, I, I, my familiarity with registrations have simply been the sticker goes on the bike, uh, right. you know, like a license plate on a car, but they're not license plates. They're just, you know, some sort of sticker. Uh, but uh, it, so it, maybe maybe if they make a rule that says you have to have the sticker on the helmet, and if you're not wearing a helmet, you have to put it in your hair. Maybe that'll yeah. convince people to wear helmets, which <laughs> I'm a big fan of. Um, yeah. I mean, to me, that's it sounds like a a push too far. So you have to have it on your helmet uh, yeah. because there is no helmet law. Uh, and uh, it, it would, uh, yeah, well, I, I haven't looked at this and uh, it just seems to me counterintuitive. Uh, right. Well, they, they don't post their minutes very quickly. I, I think um, they've been short um, people. So hopefully you'll see that online in the next month, but um, it'll be discussed again at the next meeting. And I'm happy to share any of our concerns about how this would be implemented and how it works. Yeah. Uh, Lynn, is the main focus um, on the e-bikes and the safety? Because I have, I mean, I'm listening to this and as a biker, I'm finding this like kind of disturbing. I mean, I understand registering your bike. And if you have a little sticker on your bike and it gets stolen, you're gonna find it. If the sticker's on your helmet, you're not gonna find your bike. People wear different helmets. In my 30 years of living on the island, I probably amassed about 12 bikes in my girl in my shed mm -hmm. that people will borrow or use. Do I need to go register them all? I, I kind of see like, and when you have a family that comes for a vacation for a week or two, and if they bring over their own e-bike, how do we, you know, tell them the rules of the road? So I think there are some things they should think about, about, you know, if you're renting your, if people are renting, there should be information in the rental house about e-bike regulations um, or something on a website somewhere. But I, I just don't see the practicality of every single bike on the island getting registered and policing people for that. I think the bigger issue is educating about safety on the bike paths and safety around e-bikes. I, I think that is part of the registration. That's how they can reach you. But they also realize, I think it's a good suggestion. We had real estate agents in Sconset hand out information for each rental package and to, mm -hmm. to have the real estate agents um, Island-wide use the revised brochure as part of the documents yeah. that they hand over to a renter with the keys would is an excellent observation to continue that broadly. I think they've been fixated on what do we do about e-bikes and regulation and uh, are they on the road, are they on the bike path and how to delineate that. And they're counting on the bike rental groups to be the first ones to educate. But I think you'll see this in everything that comes out of the Chamber of Commerce, um, the town itself promoting this. So at least they're mm -hmm. all behind the idea of let's make all the bike paths safer. Let's make pedestrians aware of um, you know, the rights of a biker. And um, I think the practicality of getting every bike registered on island probably isn't their total focus. It's more like let's create more awareness and education of, of which the civic associations can certainly be a strong partner. Yes. Any other comments or observations? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, Donna. Donna. Yep. Um, Lynn, I, I understand the awareness and the education campaigns, but I am curious, was there a discussion about putting stickers on the bikes themselves? 
the helmet, I don't understand, because if you lose your bike, what is the helmet going to do? A, a, an in, in, a registration on a helmet. I, I just think this is their initial idea. They may decide to put, give you two stickers, one for your bike. It's really not about lost bikes. It's really about bike safety. And the idea that you registered your bike and you got some kind of um, award for registering <laughs> and making it free. So, you know, this is a, a good attempt at, at an advisory committee trying to promote safety as their major um, impetus for creating these ideas. Well, yeah. I think it's a good effort. I think that's very good. The, the uh, confusion on where you put the sticker um, yeah. seems to me that uh, if you think about uh, cars, you have typically two kinds of licenses. You have a driver's license and then you have a license for the car. And so maybe one can, and, and you can think of these stickers more like driver's licenses for bikes, although they're not required. Um, but as a legal matter, if somebody's pulled over has one for violating a rule, it's hard for them to, you know, say they were unaware of the rules. Um, and uh, uh, that, of course, you know, it, uh, being unaware of the law is not a defense in any event, but uh, the uh, just an interesting point to me probably nobody else uh, okay uh that's that's great Th thank you for you know keeping on top of this um and i think our our general interest is um basically uh, if, if there are going to be rule changes uh, we want to make sure that uh, they uh have a uh, uh, for for people who are not regularly on the island, that uh, you know everybody be aware, and so the educational aspect is, uh, I think, our our key issue. Um, thank you. Sure. So then we, get, we go to the ATM articles, and I, I thought we would start off there with uh, apparently there's been some activity in the short term rental area, and maybe uh, Kathy, you could. Uh, uh, Tell us what anything in addition to uh, what the newspapers have told us in the last 10 days. Uh, well, I think it's all there. I don't know if everyone subscribes to them. I think they've done a good job of reporting on what's what's going on. So basically, um, the two citizens articles, one was um, sponsored by attorney Cohen, the other one by Michael Kopko. Um, at some of the FinCom meetings and the select board meetings, there was a recommendation that the authors tried to get together and see if there's a way to combine them into a single article so there would be less confusion at town meeting. And that included the town. So there was a discussion between those two gentlemen, as well as Brooke Moore representing the select board and Denise Cronow, who's representing FinCom. And they came up with um, a, a resolution that basically uh, started with the town's article as a base and um, and modified it so that it would have uh, there's there were some intents up at the front of these if you read them they were like introductory language the source of those actually um, was uh, from the short term rental work group they were not meant to be um, uh, they were they were not meant to be stated truths, they were just meant to be people's opinions when, when the group was trying to form a reason for why do you need short-term rental regulations. So those were called down to only include those items that are actually going to be proposed as regulations. And the, the key point there was there was a very specific addition in there in the language that states that the purpose of the general bylaw for short-term rentals is to, one of the purposes is to, is to preserve the um, you know long-term uh, tradition of vacation home rentals on the island. And the reason for that is to put that out there in the law. So if it pass, passes, then the judge in the legal lawsuit, the lawsuits right now would have that as information that the town supports the regulation of short-term rentals and therefore it, it believes that they are illegal. So it adds an additional um, Point to that to the town's position in that area, and what it does really is it prohibits future uh, corporate ownership of short-term rentals, which seem to be by all involved 
a not necessarily the only point of agreement, but but one that was general consensus that everybody could could cut line up behind. Um, it does just like the original town article preserve the um, existing uh, corporate owners. So there's uh, the grandfathering, if you will, the um, of those owners. Um, and so a, a corporation has also got a definition in there, as well as um, a definition of time sharing and fractional ownership is now in there that was put in there. So the only th so there if, if you currently are a corporation and you own a short and operate a short term rental, it, it can continue as long as it's not sold and a corporate uh, individuals. And that means LLCs, S corps, they can continue to operate. Um, without any restrictions, um, <clears throat> as long as they stay with the owners and all of the owners need to be uh, natural persons. Um, the so that's it's pretty simple. No more corporate ownership, and if you already have one, you're 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 good to go until you until you cease doing that. So that was considered a good first step, not necessarily the final step, but something everybody could agree on. So that's the general bylaw uh, that's proposed, and it's it's basically in the language. Um, the recommendations that have gone forward from the FinCom and the select board is to take no action on the two existing citizens warrant articles for the general bylaw that would be uh, 61 and 62, I think, and to, and to vote for the town, the version of the town's version, which has now been amended. So that's the general bylaw. Um, <clears throat> the zoning bylaw that attorney Cohen had also proposed was to uh, define uh, short-term rentals as an, uh, a permissible use in residential areas, except for um, there is a commercial zoning area where they would not be permitted. And this, this would permit um, specifically codify um, them as legal, and that includes any, any kind of rental property. So right now there's nothing in the zoning that protects a home from being rented to another family for 31 days or 35 days or two years. That's quote, not quote unquote, that's not specifically legal. It's never one's ever challenged it, but this particular um, wording would cover all of all rentals uh, to, to, to families and people who rent, rent homes. So the compromise on that is that their, their recommendation will be to take no action uh, on this zoning bylaw unless there's an adverse judgment um, from the courts that comes out before town meeting and says that short-term rentals are illegal. If that's the ruling, then this bylaw will sit there and be ready to be voted on by the town if people choose to say, well, no, that's not right, they are legal. Otherwise, it will be take no action on it because it's technically not needed. For example, there's no ruling yet or the judge already ruled that they're legal. It's not a necessary uh, bylaw. So that's, it's really strategy wise, I think um, they they made some good choices there. It should be less controversial than it has been in the past. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's the be all and end all. Um, it can be changed uh, as a general bylaw anytime, uh, once a year at town meeting. So I hope that wasn't too convoluted an explanation. No. Um, that was very good. Uh, the, the, did you have something else to say about that or didn't no. want me to cut you off? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, that is very good. Did, what is the number of the, um, the select board uh, revised? Uh, 60. 60, so it goes first, that, that's the main. 15, 15 uh, nine and 60, yeah. Okay, so it goes first and then the other, the take no actions are after uh, yeah, and, and that's a good question. I think since the yeah. zoning is zoning articles are usually first in the warrant, and the STR zoning article is the last of the first, so it's fifty nine, and the towns is sixty. And I think that what uh, there'll be a request that the moderator move that one to be after sixty, so that we would vote the zoning. You know, obviously, if there's take no action, you just leave it there yeah. at the at town meeting. But if you need to vote on it, I think that it would be moved. Yeah. However, Sarah Sarah Alger can do that. It requires somebody to call it up, right? For for yeah. consideration, and uh, so if if a take no action is called up by somebody, it then will actually you know be voted on one way or the other. 
Right. Yeah. You so that so that even though it's recommended to, to leave it alone, somebody could call it, and there's no you can't control that. Okay. And then it would have to be addressed. So here's the sixty-four thousand dollar question for you. Um, I've I've read through the revised uh, uh, one that is uh, you know recommended by FinCom and uh, the select board and the result of this compromise. And I did, our, our issue has been, and oh, has been you know, discrimination against non-voting taxpayers. Uh, and I did not see in a very quick reading that there is any discrimination against non-voting taxpayers in that. What about your more careful reading of it? No, I agree with you. It's, it's, yeah. it's not discriminatory in, in the way it reads right now. Um, you know, someone could propose a different language at town meeting, who knows, but not the way it reads now. Okay, so so then I think at this point, uh, does anybody else have any other questions about this particular issue? Peter Maybe. has his hand up. Peter, yes. It's not really, it's not a question, it's more of a comment. I mean, I, I, I was going to say, say that we really don't need to take a position because our issue seems to be a non-issue. Um, but I, you know, I see where Matt Fee is, he was on, I guess he still is on. I must say, personally, I tend to agree with him. I mean, I think this is so watered down at this point, uh, that it's, it's almost worthless. The idea that, that corporate entities can't, um, uh, can't go forward. Um, but, uh, there's no limitation on the number of short-term rentals one can have, you know, people can simply hold and do hold them in their own, hold them in their, in, in their, in their either personal titles or LLCs or what have you. Um, this does, you know, I mean, so the corporations, you know, don't, you don't need a corporation just to continue to have a lot of, a lot of short-term rentals uh, under, under, under one, uh, one entity's control. Uh, I, um, I don't see a lot of value in this. Uh, yes, it's a first step. It's such a baby step uh, that I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see, I just don't see the value. I'm curious, uh, if if Matt is prepared to say anything about it, since he's here, he let's see, he was here. I don't know if he's still here. He is, and uh, his hand is up. Okay, let me, let me just let me just say one one thing that the town article never had a, a a restriction on on the number of short term rentals anybody could own. That one that the town put forward and the select no. board approved never had that provision. No, but, but, but our group, I mean, but, but that was that was the recommendation uh, of of the study group. Uh, and I, you know, and there was a that reason was a for that. Yeah, that was a compromise position, and this is another compromise position that well, clearly, the idea was just to get something that everybody agreed on passed because the number of STRs that anyone owns is is somewhat more controversial. So then you you could lose some votes. The idea is to get get that passed, and maybe the restriction on the number you could get passed next year. But to try to put it all in one thing was was the concern. No, I understand. I failed. understand. So. No, I understand. My only point is that I think it's such a it's a just an incredibly small baby step uh, that it's it's hardly worth it. But so, Matt, uh, I think Matt, you had your hand up. Yeah, I I opposed uh, this article. I feel like we it was an, it, I feel like it's not a compromise. I feel like it's a capitulation on the you know on the town's part. Uh, it's not a first step. It's the final step because if we actually vote this, we're going to be just like Kathy had said. This is going to show the state that we think these are legal everywhere. Well, it, it will, and it's going to be proof of that. And so, if we take this step, I think we have we've uh, sort of sealed our own fate in a way. And so, I think it you know in the in the rush to do something, we are you know doing something that can't be undone. And I think it's a bit of a a, a runaround from you know the zoning which hasn't passed. It's an attempt to go go to that direction i think that we are as a community have to be very careful about heading down this direction and it was done you know so it, and i think the short-term rental group you know made a, made had some very good recommendations last year that you know that if the fincom hadn't amended them i think would have passed and i think we would have had a first step that we could have could have lived with and learned from I, I'm very concerned that once this happens, you know, it, it's like letting the barn door open. It's hard to get the horse back in. If we do this, it's going to be very hard to tighten it later. So, I, you know, I, that's my concerns. That's why I didn't vote for it. Uh, and, you know, I think I, we'll see. Thank you. Yeah, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. 
I think the one thing that's different here, Matt, is that the this is a this is not a zoning bylaw. This is a general bylaw. So next town meeting, you can turn it around and say they're not legal. So it's not the I mean the horse is out of the barn already because they are all over the island in every zone right now. So that 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 is an existing thing. But you can turn it off. You could say next year, you know what? They're not grandfathered anymore because it's not a zoning law. You could say, you know what? No new ones and the ones that are, you know, you can say that they're all illegal. The next step next year could say that. So it's a baby step. It doesn't prevent you from making it more strict in the future um, or less strict, depending on what the town wants. So I just think it is a good first step. And it's not what everybody wants. That's for sure. But that's OK. It's something. So so, so any other uh, questions or comments on this? Um, uh, let me, I don't see any, and I, I can yes. only see part Donna's of his hand is up. Donna's yeah. hand is up. Yeah. I just want to say, you know, after thinking about this, yes, the short-term rental group has done hours and hours and hours of trying to come up with something. But I think the final thing is if it's not really that good, then why propose it at all and wait until we can come up with something that more people would be satisfied with. That's just my comment. I think there's an obvious answer, uh, and the uh, Matt or Matt before Matt has his hand up again. Maybe he just has a, an just a quick answer. comment. I, I I think it's a it's a wish on the part of you know of all of us to get something that will pass and let's do something about it. But I I compared it to the Stop the Straw campaign. We spent a lot of time trying to ban straws, but they're already banned, and it really didn't do anything. Uh, and so I think it's. The other part is the idea that corporations will be, uh, you know, that that will have any meaning or any effect is uh, is kind of ludicrous. The corporations, you know, because if they have natural people behind them, they are allowed to do it. Well, do you know any corporations that will do this that don't have, not, you know, li limited liability corps or any type of entity that doesn't have people behind it? You know, the people aren't doing shell corporations to then run these. They're just going to put them in their family with natural people names. I think, you know, so I think this is a, this really, it's a, it's a, it looks, it looks like we're trying to do something, but we aren't. And I, I just, it's unfortunate that we're here, you know, but here we are again. Anybody else? Uh, I don't see any hands, but I can't see all the hands in any event. Uh, let me uh, add here then. Um, the uh, I, I, I take it to add some teeth to this that would require an amendment on the floor. Uh, and by the way, when I say add teeth, that's not a pejorative comment on whether or not this is good or not, but rather to change it to perhaps add in some of the restrictions that the short-term rental group considered um, the last time around. Uh, I, I don't know whether restrict being more restrictive than the current proposal uh, would be out of the scope and therefore not uh, acceptable by the um, the moderator uh, under the rules of the town meeting. Um, uh, so I'd be interested if anybody has a comment on that. But before um, I leave this point, uh, last year, uh, we, I wrote to the moderator uh, explaining the, uh, the law on discrimination as it applied, the, the federal law on discrimination as it applied to our situation, the Dormant Commerce Clause. And um, that was in preparation or to, to arm the moderator so that she, if she thought appropriate, uh, could rule an amendment out of order that uh, reproposed the discrimination that had been proposed and then dropped from the strong proposal. And I'm just wondering whether it is appropriate to do the same thing again this year and um, and uh, and whether whether we will need to have a member of this group at the town meeting to address discrimination if it should pop up, uh, in uh, in a, an amendment uh, at on the floor at the town meeting, uh, and, you know, forewarned is kind of forearmed on this. 
uh, as to the whole proposal, whether it's weak or strong or anything else, I think that's for the town to decide. Um, our issue is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, our issue is to uh, uh, basically, you know, look out for uh, this discrimination. You know, the the introduction of discrimination against uh, non-voting taxpayers in whatever is adopted by the town. And uh, so Peter has his hand yeah. up. Yeah, yep. yep, Peter. I would no. I I, I think uh, as you say, better better forearm and forewarned and for, forearmed. I think we should send that again, just a reminder of it. Uh, I also I do think that. Um, whatever is put forward would be arguably more restrictive because uh, this is there's no restrictions here basically. So I think in that sense it would probably be out of order uh, in any event. Um, but I don't think it's. I think we need to make it clear to her what our position is. Yeah, yeah. So I, I will write something up, and I think by the next meeting uh, we should decide. Uh, it's, I don't know my schedule, uh, whether I will be on island for the town meeting, you know, it, who, who, who is likely to be on the, the island and can be a, a spokesperson if needed uh, at the town meeting uh, for a singular purpose. Uh, and uh, we would spell it out to the moderator in advance. Well, uh, I'll be there, Peter, because I'm always there for Daffy. So Okay, okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to plan to be there for Daffy, but... Uh, you know that's two months from now. I don't know whether I'll make it or not. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the um, uh, so so that's good. Uh, the the other um, uh, article that that we discussed the last time, and which I did some following up on, is uh, Article eighty one, uh, and that that had to do with the uh, provision to amend the Sewer Act to waive sewer connection fees to those qualified um, for a residential exemption. Um, and um, I, I did follow up, but uh, did not get to a desired result on that. And as, as you may recall, um, the uh, there's been a proposal, which I think has been extant for three years and passed twice before, that would allow the sewer commission, which I believe is the basically the select board with a different hat on, um, to waive in appropriate cases for residential property owners uh, the sewer connection fee, which is quite substantial. Uh, and um, uh, it was our uh, thought uh, at the last meeting that uh, that should also be waivable for non-residential uh, taxpayers. Uh, given that non-residential taxpayers can, uh, you know, also run into a situation in which this substantial fee, uh, if required, would um, be, you know, sort of catastrophic for them, uh, but also that the uh, the past proposals had not gone quite far enough, and that there ought to be a uh, re reimbursement uh, provision in the uh, the sewer. Um, uh, this sewer bill, which has never been passed by the legislature, but it's been passed twice by the uh, town meeting, uh, that would basically uh, require that whoever's received one of these um, uh, for need uh, exemptions or waivers of the fee, that that um, e waived fee really not be waived, rather it should be uh, come a lien on the title of the real estate and that when the real estate is transferred or sold, transferred by sale, not, not particularly transferred to another family member, um, that uh, the, the fee be um, subject to collection at closing by the town. And uh, that uh, engendered some positive response uh, from people but I, uh, it, it had already been, this whole issue had already been uh, through the FinCom at the time that we addressed it. So, um, you know, I, I was a little bit late to the game bringing it up. And um, because of this, uh, the, the notion that uh, amendments on the floor uh, that are more restrictive might prevent such an amendment from being heard. Um, 
uh, we are sort of in, in that situation right now. Uh, and I, I don't know, I haven't found somebody who was willing to amend it on the floor in any event, uh, but um, this may be an issue for next year, if indeed the legislature does not take this up again, or it might be something the select board considers for legislation if the legislature does take it up to further amend uh, the sewer act. So that's kind of a long-winded say way of saying we've raised the issue and um, hey, we've not gotten it over the goal line here. Uh, and I don't know if there's anything more particularly to do about it right now, um, but uh, that's for your information. So if anybody has any thoughts on that, uh, please let me know uh, now. Uh, and I, I think that basically is are all of the uh, uh, the items that were uh, up for town meeting that we have discussed in the past that we were interested in. Uh, uh, we also talked, I think, about the rental cars, but uh, the select board is uh, isn't Peter. Isn't summer yeah. construction on the agenda? Oh yes, uh, well, summer construction is is on the agenda, but it's not uh, on the agenda for this town meeting. No, no, I meant for us today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. yes, yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. I, I, that I would go from that to uh, uh, sort of the town meeting issues. I think we've discussed now. Okay. Um, unless somebody has a recollection that, or or an idea that there is yet another town meeting that we need to discuss, town meeting issue. And, but I hearing nothing. So let's um, leave this section on the town meeting and. Uh, um, and, uh, and go to the discussion of potential citizens articles on summer outdoor construction restrictions. Does, uh, does anybody have anything to discuss about that? I, I can tell you that the person who brought it up the last time uh, asked to discuss this with me, but it was on a, on a weekend uh, that, that I couldn't discuss it. And I said, I'd be happy to discuss it further, but do you, um, do you have some actual wording uh, of a proposed amendment that uh, would, uh, w which would be brought to town meeting to create this uh, uh, this construction re outdoor construction restriction? And I've not uh, heard back or received uh, any wording, and so I think that this is again you know, uh, something that we should keep on our our agenda uh, but it's it's hard to uh, address it without a concrete proposal uh, and I say that because this was a non-starter what three years ago or so when we were in actively involved in noise regulations uh, and um, uh, it uh, it did not uh, did not get through to a final proposal for town meeting at that point, it being a restriction on summer construction. I think all that happened is that, you know, the construction hours changed by maybe one hour uh, in, the, in the summer season. Uh, and I, this is a very difficult area because so much of the business of the island is construction and so much construction is now being done year round uh, because of the demand for construction and the limit on the number of people on the island who actually do construction. Uh, um, so Lynn's hand is up and then Peter's. Yeah, Lynn, go ahead. Um, there actually is a, um, Carolyn Baltzer from Grant Point has, has something that she's filing and she's already spoken to John Giorgio and Libby Gibson and has gotten um, advice from Arthur Reed and her warrant article would it, would ban exterior building, um, including framing from July 1st to Labor Day. And it would only be for Brant Point, the town of Nantucket and Sconset. And you would have a relief by special permit, but she has gone and spoken to builders saying you could adjust your schedule 
to uh, make sure that you aren't doing anything in, in July and August. And I, for Brand Point, the noise, the parking issues, um, and now they're claiming safety, you know, too many trucks with, with children. Now, the Sconset Civic Association has not signed on to this. And, and I would think Madiket would be highly interested as well as other parts of the island. So um, it, when you look at her application or her initial um, review, it, it really begs the question of restriction. And, and she has, you know, from my point of view, manipulated something from the Sconset area plan to make it look like we were talking about construction when we were not. We were talking about just sheer volume of cars, trucks, and people. So this is something that's coming up and that she is working on that um, I only had the application that goes about seven pages when you answer the questionnaire and I'm happy to give it to Kathy so she can share it with, with the committee and post it with the, um, minutes to comply with open meeting, but this is something that's already going to adapt from the bylaw that's what 101.1 or, you know, the series of subsets and isn't talking about the hour, hours of operation, which is the most confusing part of the bylaw because please differentiate between what is a mechanical power tool is different than a a saw, a drill, a sander, a grinder, which have different hours of operation. So I think if they can come up with something that's more simplified, and um, I, I think this is, they've gotten positive feedback, I think, but um, I just wanted to let the committee know that there is someone working on this who's gone quite far down the road. Good. Yeah, I, I, th I think it was Carolyn who I communicated with uh, a month ago or so. Um, the uh, So I'm glad to hear that it's been taken another step. Uh, I know that was more of a uh, statement of principles when I saw it than it was actual, you know, an amendment, uh, a concrete amendment that uh, one could say, OK, this is this is clearly what's being proposed as the law. Um, and I take it now there is some set of it's concrete. Or the questionnaire that you fill out for the town, like how, what will this cost? How will it be impacting? Who does it impact? Um, so you're answering all these questions and then the actual writing is still in process. So right. I, I don't think her amendment is tight enough. I, I think it's, it's a, the proposal more than yeah. something to really look at. So is it, it seems to me at, at this point, uh, unless somebody else has some other observations, um, that this might be something to keep our ears and eyes open, that it might be more appropriate for the uh, various town associations to kind of weigh in on, on it uh, uh, before we do any... Uh, particularly particular lifting on this. And I, I say that having lifted in the past and uh, just come away with a sore back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Uh, uh, because uh, the, you know, we're, th this is where non-voters and voters really, you know, the, the rubber hits the road because the, uh, it's the voters who will be restricted uh, in the uh, commercial activity that they are able to do during some some portion of the year. And it could be, you know, the outside construction uh, is not that big of an impediment uh, uh, during that really what it's really all, almost two months or more, a little over two months uh, of the year. Yeah. Any Any other comments or thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I just think I mean to me it's you know more tilting at excuse me tilting at windmills as we've seen in the past. Uh, I, I just want to be I just want to be clear that 
that this proposal it's 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 it has, this is not coming to town meeting or anything yet. it's far from that at this point i take it so um we'll have an opportunity to look at it but the fact that it differentiates between different parts of the island you know query you know yes brand point and scotson but you know hey mid island there there are areas of mid island that have houses on well, on top of each other so i'm not sure what you know what the rationale there is as to why you distinguish that um, bottom line, I'd like to, see, you know, I think it really is going to depend on how narrowly this thing can be drawn because I don't see it get, I don't see the uh, commercial people uh, getting behind it unless it's very narrowly drawn. And one last thing, I mean, I, I think the bigger issue, and I think um, Lynn ref re referred to this, you know, it's the big, you know, it's the big trucks, you know, it's the big heavy trucks that are coming through and and tying up traffic and 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 you know what have you, and and I don't know what you know that this does much about that. Uh, to tell you the truth, um, and uh, so. So, um, um, Ash, I'd like. Um, Arthur Reed told her to concentrate on three areas so that it left builders the opportunity to go do things on other parts of the island. Which mm -hmm. so now you're pushing construction to maybe Quidnet or Squam or just because that's okay for those people, which seems grossly unfair, but right. that was his point of view that that would make it easier to get through, which I'm not sure I, I would agree with in any well, way. Yeah, well, maybe two acre zoning, you know, maybe those areas where there's two acre zoning or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think it should be done by zoning. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I understand why Arthur came up with that, but I don't agree. Um, I, uh, Lynn, I want to thank you for bringing um, the, more of this information to our committee. Uh, I think this would be of great interest to to our constituents because a lot of us just come for the summer, and nobody wants all those trucks back and forth, back and forth. And the fact that Carolyn is talking to some builders, I think that's good. You start working with them. And I think this is a good beginning. I'm, I'm hopeful because that would be great if we could cut back on uh, the huge dump trucks and so forth that come hour after hour, minute after minute. Um, so I would appreciate it if you'd keep us up on it and see if we, there's something that we can do at some point. If... Uh, other members are interested in following this project. Does anybody want a copy of what's been written so yes. far? Circulated? Yes. Yes, yeah. please. I can please. reach out to Caroline and as I know her I, and get I a have, copy of it. I have it. So I'll just send it to you right after the meeting and then you can circulate it. Patty has a hand up. Oh, okay, I, I, wanted, I, I was just going to reach out for she may have made modifications since you got it. So I was just going to ask her for what the current version is, but please send it to me. That would be great. Okay. My comment is short. I just wanted to um, go along with what Donna said that I think this is, um, we should give this some attention and some um, backing because there's a lot of proposals on what to do about the traffic. And, um, you know, they were talking about limiting the number of cars coming over that, definitely affects our constituents and so on. And if you can limit, and Libby Gibson is really worried about all these huge trucks, you know, with the infrastructure of the streets going to heck because of the bigger trucks and so on. So I think um, we it would be a far better thing to limit uh, framing during the summer and keep some of those big trucks off the, the road as opposed to limiting how many cars come over and hurt our tourism. Because I believe if we've talked to the Chamber of Commerce, um, tourism is top dog in terms of money making over construction. I think it's pretty neck and neck, but I think we need to give a lot of clearance to our, our, our tourism industry. That's it. Anybody else? Yeah, I would just you want to add to that. Um, we're constantly talking about traffic. Well, if we can eliminate some of those big trucks, that will uh, increase the flow of some of our traffic. Pam has her hand up. Yeah, while we're talking about this, I would love it if we could get um, Mike Burns, the traffic person, to visit one of our meetings. Um, I am about to um, re- visit with the Wisconsin Civic Association, a situation that happened back in 2005 when uh, they came through and, and I actually came out to a uh, 
Board of Selectmen meeting that was held in September when they decided to remove a lot of the yellow lines around the village of Sconset so that there could be more parking in the central core. That has turned into a disaster in terms of congestion on the small village streets and things like that. And I would I would love to re-engage, you know, the town traffic and safety um, person to relook at some of the things that were changed over the years that have become even more dangerous now that we have bigger trucks and more landscapers. And uh, personally, my daughter was hit by a car and my car was damaged twice by workers who said, well, I either had to hit your car or the children walking in the street. So I chose to hit your car instead. Um, so, you know, we've lived through this in these small, you know, on small streets. So I, I think, yes, the noise thing. And if we can do, if we can focus a little on traffic, I think, and, and safety, I think that's important. Uh, Madonna. I, yeah, I'd like to add, I think going along with that, um, I do agree, we should have Mike speak. And I think we should prepare an agenda, a number of topics that we think our uh, constituents are very concerned about over the summer. So we have something planned. So when he comes, we can ask these questions. Yeah, so there, there's another uh, traffic issue um, that uh, I've read about over the last two or three weeks and that has to do with uh, the one-way traffic and uh, around the uh, stop and shop and uh, uh, the rotary at the high school again being coming coming into uh, uh, you know play possibly. Um, so I think uh, maybe should we invite uh, Mike Burns for the next meeting and in the meantime perhaps you know send me or send Kathy the issues that that you would like and, and then we just send it to him in advance. Uh, uh, assuming that he accepts, uh, and uh, you know he he was with us about a year ago, um, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a I think a good speaker, and uh, uh, he he is the traffic you know the traffic guy, but he doesn't have all the power to do about. He just has recommendations that he can uh, uh, come up with, uh, but that's a good place to start. Uh, we also have Christy Farantella, who's requested to, to, to be a guest speaker at one of our meetings. So um, she's the new housing director, the new Tucker Holland. Yeah. So that's just another name for us to consider. So, so I think I think we could we could probably accommodate two in one of these meetings. Uh, and uh, maybe that would be a good way to uh, start off uh, April or do people prefer to have this when we might meet in person uh, during the, which would be months from now, quite oh. obviously. Um, and we'll obviously have um, Libby at some point in the spring, probably uh, spring, meaning May or June. Uh, I'm just so you know, yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. Mike, Mike Burns sits on the bike, um, pedestrian safety advisory committee so you would get two for one by getting him he could talk about the bikes as well as traffic yeah i agree with that i would i would put christy separately she's got a presentation yeah. and an update to make which oh. and i've seen it it's very good but it would you, you would never you would have a, a too long meeting i think so i think I'll, I'll, okay. yeah mike you know mike lives off island so i think bring, you know i think it's probably better to do it by zoom now rather than wait uh I don't think it's going to be any advantage to wait. So, good point. So, I, I will invite him for the April meeting, and uh, let you all know whether he can attend or not. And uh, I mean, whether or not he can come in April is probably good to start collecting these issues, uh, because he may not be the only person who we want to raise them with. Uh, and as for Sconset and parking. Oh. and accidents the only place on the island i've ever had uh an accident visited upon me uh is Scotset at the rotary parking there uh where a uh summer renter in a you know car that came with the house uh backed into me and uh caused i don't know twelve hundred dollars worth of damage um and then uh, didn't want to pay for it but um, it's uh, 
yeah, it's it's conge it's very congested, obviously, uh, down there. Uh, and I must say, I was lured to Sconset by the uh, cookies at the uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, whatever the shop is at the Rotary. Uh, fantastic cookies. I'm glad that's going to survive uh, the change of property ownership. It looks like it is. Uh, I might be brave enough to come back and park there again at some uh, The uh, okay. So uh, report from the PR committee. Uh, Patty, do you want to uh, do that? Uh, we've had some uh, emails uh, from Steve and- uh, Yeah, I wanted, uh, it came up because Steve um, contacted the uh, publications because they weren't putting in our, our notices and they came back with some interesting comments. And I think we, um, one of them didn't seem to even understand our committee. And I'm thinking that's a, problem considering that position and so i was taking after what donna talked about uh last time and that their committee hopefully is doing some pr work to make sure that people understand that we have that committee of of maybe a new governance um, i'm thinking that maybe our committee could do more in a pr sense in the summer by going to civic um meetings uh I live in Monomoy, Wisconsin, or wherever, we could go to one of their meetings and just state what we are and what we are not and make sure that more people understand that we exist. I think there's a huge problem of not really anybody understanding what the reason there is a committee like ours. And they think, you know, lots of different things. So anyway, um, we would have to, I believe in the next month or so, come up with a cohesive um, idea of what to present to any of these civic meetings that would allow us to speak and um, have a, a you know a united front as to what we say and see who in this committee is having the time to go to any of these meetings. Um, I wonder if people would be willing to, you know, start that initiative. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Put a hand up. Go ahead. Um, I I think it would be great. Um, for Peter to go to the Nantucket Civic League meeting that has all the presidents of the 25 associations that meet twice in the summer, not, not only to listen, but also to um, enjoy breakfast at my comet first thing on Saturday morning and um, <laughs> just share again what we do and they can share it again. I, I would hope all of us are members of our respective civic association and our um, vocal about what we can share with your respective president of the association. But I, I think that linkage is a very good idea and a strong idea because we need to hear from them as much as they need to hear from us. When, when typically is that breakfast? Because I'm strongly in favor of breakfast. And the breakfast is awesome at my comic golf club. Um, it's usually right in the end of June, beginning of July or August, the beginning of August as well. And then they have their own annual meeting in September. So Charlie Stott and um, they, would, they would love to have you. So um, I'm happy to be the conduit to introduce you if you don't know them already. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to be introduced. And if for some reason I'm not here, it could be that one of the others of us could uh, fill the same role or do the, the same job. It, it strikes me, you know, thinking about uh, what Patty just said, it uh, we have the only source of what we are and what we do is the um, the uh, the uh, town charter uh, where the, our enabling legislation is on our website, and I would suggest that everybody take a look at that, which is basically to give advice to the select board on matters of concern to non-voting taxpayers. Um, and But I think we could fill that out a little bit more, kind of a, a one-page one outline of what, what we actually do. And I think that's, you know, changed a little bit over the years, uh, but it's it's how we how we figure out what it, the issues are of concern to uh, non-paying 
non-voting taxpayers, not non-paying taxpayers, uh, how we figure that out and um, and what what our normal process is of uh, deciding to take a position or not take a position. Um, because I think that that's basically what we do. And if one want, want to say, well, what is this committee? Um, uh, that might help to ex explain it. Uh, uh, Peter, there's a hand up from a guest. Yeah, I, I see that. Uh, okay. uh, just before I do that, uh, that that's that's my thought on this. So, Kimberly uh, and Shulam. <laughs> yeah, Shulam. Thank you, and and welcome, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Thank Why you. are you here? Yeah. Um, well, I'm here. I'm an a non-voting taxpayer. Yeah. Um, I live on island full time, um, as of just recently, and um, I'm visiting because I saw in the Nantucket oh. Current some of the things that you were going to be discussing today, and they caught my interest. And so I'm just wondering, in an effort to kind of get out to the public what you guys do, could you just offer um, a Zoom session that anybody can listen in on and sort of give a presentation of who you are and what you do? Well, I think it, in, in a way, the our our weekly meeting or weekly monthly meetings uh, are do do that kind of thing. Although it's could be intensely boring. I mean, you've been with us maybe for an hour and a half now, and uh, you're still awake, which is uh, which, which is great. Uh, and uh, the as I say, the this you know one long paragraph bylaw explains the concept, which basically I think it. it Way back when, 20, 20 some odd years ago, when the town decided to go to a two tier tax system um, where uh, the voting taxpayers, uh, the residential taxpayers uh, got to uh, uh, a lowered tax bill than the non-residential taxpayers, that the town decided to uh, come up with this committee. Uh, and I'm not sure how, because I wasn't around then, uh, and I always think of us sort of as a canary in a coal mine type of situation where uh, when the town is thinking of doing something that would be more impactful on non-resident taxpayers who don't have a vote, um, then, um, then uh, it might be wise that we're there to speak up and uh, basically make, make the, the possible painful result known uh, and hopefully through uh, through raising the issue and ventilating it uh, avoid it and I, I think we we've, we've done that quite a bit uh, another thing that we uh, have done uh, and that's really a device of one of the people in town is you know what looking for things that increase the quality of life of uh, non-resident taxpayers. Should that be our basic uh, increase or maintain the quality of life of non-residents? Should that be a reason d'etre for us all? And we've we've looked at things like that. Indeed, the, this construction during the high season is that kind of issue. Traffic is that kind of issue. So it's, it's basically a group of now 15 people appointed by the town manager and confirmed by the select board uh, who uh, sort of bring their collective wisdom to issues like that, uh, to speak to the select board and to speak to the annual town meeting. At, at this point, we are the only entity that is entitled to attend and uh, speak at as appropriate the uh, annual town meeting on, on issues of concern. So that, that about, puts it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sure others have a uh, you know, more fulsome idea than, than I've just expressed, uh, but we're, we're kind of here year round now with these virtual meetings that used to be only in the summertime. And uh, people who are, I think, civic minded um, have experience uh, apparently as you have, uh, you know, being on the island as non-residents for a period of time, there's no, time period requirement uh, and bringing their you know common sense uh, uh, to the board and hopefully making suggestions that are helpful. 
Okay, thank you for all of that. Um, I was just sort of responding to your um, um, suggestions of speaking at different civic um, groups, just to sort of explain who you are. If you just did one that anybody could listen in on, I just think that might be more efficient for you guys and more helpful. And this is the first of your meeting that I've ever sat in on, and um, it's been really educational. Um, but for example, there were a few issues that I would like to express comments on, and I'm not sure how to go about doing that. Yeah. Okay. So the, we have an agenda, uh, and, and so that is to give public notices to what the items that we are highly likely to address. Uh, and I think there's, uh, you know, the question is, how do you get on the agenda? Uh, uh, and, uh, Part of it can be some public meeting at the end, and that might create a, 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 a future agenda item or contacting the secretary uh, or me or one of the Peter Kahn. We only have three three officers uh, and uh, or one of the members, any of the members, uh, one you may know, and uh, just say, gee whiz, shouldn't your committee look at this, that, or the other thing? And, um, and uh, I think we're open to do that. Uh, as you could see today, there are some issues that we've been through before. And so some of us may have some personal reluctance at going at the, them again, uh, where there's been an outcome. And, uh, um, uh, but uh, I think we're, we're open to things. And then we have a question as to really, is that an issue that is uniquely a, uh, a non-resident taxpayer issue, or are there other organizations on the island that more appropriately might, uh, you know, advocate one way or another on these issues? Uh, so, Kathy, Kathy yeah. Baird, yeah. Thanks. So, just just add this to Kim Kimberly. So, we operate under the public meeting laws because we are a town appointed committee. Um, every meeting that we have is, has to be posted a certain number of days in advance. So there's a lot of restrictions under which we operate, just as any town committee operates under. So we, you know, if you look, you can sign on um, to our web, the town's website, and, and ask to be notified whenever there's a meeting, and you'll be notified, um, just like any meeting in the town. And all of our meetings are public. So as you join today and a number of people join today it's interesting that most people are hearing about it not through the town website but you know through the current or or daybreak or someplace like that 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 posts on the day we have a meeting and then we get a bunch of people that that tune in um but it is a very formal process we can't really mess with our agenda once it's posted and so forth like that because we are under the the public meeting law and why we have to uh, be very careful about admitting people and knowing who their names are before they speak because it's a public meeting. So um, the every meeting we have is a public meeting where, and there's always public comment at the end that's on the agenda where you could bring up a, an agenda item or something you think we should talk about. So that's the point at which you have to kind of sit through everything else um, and then P, the, the, the chair will recognize you. Good. So I kind of think we're at the public comment stage of this meeting. Uh, I did want to- Before you, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 just want to I, I think Kimberly, yeah. Kimberly has a floor and she should be able to ask her question. I just wanted to bring closure a little bit on the PR thing, because I think it's important that not just you go to the head of all the associations, but that we almost immerse ourselves in like your local, you know, neighborhood uh, association, because I think we have an opportunity to hear what people are thinking. And there's more people that might have different questions that come up. I think there's more often not, um, people think we do more than what we can do. So I think it's really good for us to get out and tell them what we've done and they can tell what you know they thought we were gonna do. But anyway, um, I, at some point, are we saying we're going to move forward and visit the associations? Or are we going to, I mean, we, we have only a few months to put this, basically you know this form together or are we going to table the discussion just closure on bringing up this point yeah okay so uh first of all we have done this in the past and i think kathy has been very active in doing it and i think gary has been active in doing some of it it may have not been done with i i couldn't even tell you all the associations on the island i don't know if somebody else Probably, probably Lynn could uh, tell us all the associations on the island. There's 26 uh, of them, I think. But but it, 
it was our as we expanded the expanded we had a 15 member uh limit on the number of people who could be members uh, at one time of this organization um we reached out to try to get more members from you know diversity in membership uh, if diversity is not a dirty word anymore uh or these days um and and i think we have uh, accomplished quite a bit of that because you're on the committee we have somebody from monomoy who we did not have before uh, lynn is uh, on the committee and uh, yeah. don't uh and uh, we have a, a couple of people from tom nevers uh we have a person from brant point um I'm in uh, the, uh, the so-called cliff area. I don't think we have a separate association uh, for that, uh, that area, uh, or if we do, uh, nobody's ever mentioned it to me. And, and we may have, we have more, you know, there's Madiket. And uh, I, so I think that in general, we already have uh, a reasonably good representation from all of, uh, from not all of these, but from a large, uh, slice of the uh, areas and whether or not the individual members are active in their associations, I frankly don't know, but- uh, You wanna be able to go in. I don't know if, if the committee is comfortable with that, but if I went into my Monomoy Association, I wouldn't give them a spiel on what our committee does unless we as a committee are doing this because you're speaking out of place, I think. so. Are, are we interested in going into the neighborhoods and talking, even though you did it a few years ago? I think there's still a lot of people out here that don't understand what this is all about. Or do you want to not do that? Is there any, you know, vote or anything on it? Or do you want to? My, 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 pers yeah, my, my personal view is that we, of course, are interested in what non resident PAC taxpayers think, because we are supposed to be, uh, we are supposed to have the collective wisdom and knowledge uh, so that when we speak, we are basically voicing what non-resident PAC tech taxpayers think. And so um, uh, they, and when, when, when people, we talk to each other, uh, we're talking from our personal experience and we're talking also for what our friends and neighbors uh, nearby uh, tell us uh, the and so the, I guess your the question is do we do we want to um, for you to be li a liaison with for example the your association and I think uh, there is uh, that would be absolutely fine and uh, indeed we might you know in, in as this emerges. Um, it might be that the associations nominate people to be uh, members here. Uh, they would do that by uh, contacting the uh, town manager uh, or whatever. But we want as broad a representation as possible. But we also want people with, you know, a reasonable amount of experience living uh, on the island, so they understand what the issues are for them and their neighborhoods during the course of the. Um, uh, you know, the, the season where most unpaying unpay taxpayers are likely to be uh, on the island. I, I don't know if anybody else has a, a different different views on that or uh, more, uh, more fulsome views. Yeah, Pam. Um, oops. Oh, yeah. So um, I think there's two things going on in this conversation. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Patty, from the one perspective, I think we do have a PR concern that people didn't know about this committee or how it functions or what it does. And I think we do have representation in different communities. I mean, the reason I got involved was because Libby Gibson came to a Wisconsin Civic Association meeting and talked about how this committee needed representation from Wisconsin. Um, but I like Kimberly's suggestion too. I think there's something to be said, like, I don't know if legally we could have a, instead of like an agenda meeting, but maybe a forum where 
you know, it's posted somewhere. Anyone who's interested in finding out what the committee is and how they function and what their responsibilities, what they can and cannot do. Um, I mean, it's just another way to kind of expose us from a PR perspective and, you know, get people to know that we meet every so often. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm just saying, Patty, that, that's like another tack, like do civic associations, but maybe another way to get people in the community to know we exist if we want to. I was just thinking that, you know, it's hard to get people to come, it's summer. And if they go, we have one meeting for our association and, and a lot of people go. And yeah. this is already established. It's just walk in and, and, and we have an image problem, I think, when I say problem, maybe. I don't, I think we have an image uh, thing and we can go in as, it's there for the taking. Just go in and talk to people. And that's mm -hmm. why that the grassroots kind of thing. Well, we, we could, if I'm, Pam, I think, um, if I'm understanding your, your suggestion correctly and, and sort of in, embodying what Kimberly raised and what, what Patty raised, we could have one meeting like we're having today that would be a, sort of the agenda item would be what is the committee and what does it do and how do you communicate with us and all the rest of that. And mm -hmm. part of that could be, I want to use the word scripted, but it really would be extemporaneous in a way, but we mm -hmm. might assign uh, roles, uh, you know, for certain aspects of it for people to describe. And and then as we know, these, this is being recorded and that that could become maybe that meeting could be posted on our website as a, if you want to know more about the, this, you know, watch this video. And we might um, do something we've never done before, which is uh, basically discipline ourselves to doing that all in 15 minutes or something like that. So that a person- but They can do that any month. They can come, anybody can come any month. So anybody who wants to know something can come. Yeah, but I'm suggesting we have a product about what are we? Uh, and it, this would be a way to do it in a public meeting yeah. um, uh, and rather than a couple of us sitting around and meeting with Nantucket TV. And uh, I mean, that would be another way to do it uh, if they were interested in producing a Good point. 10 or 15 minute uh, uh, spot. On, yeah, Peter, uh, that's exactly what I was saying. It's like we yeah. could do the civic associations, but we could also do like an informational session. It could be short, it could be sweet, but it at least provides provides people with some information. Based on that, they might say, okay, I'm going to watch these agendas and I'm going to attend some meetings because now I've figured out what this is all about. Okay. Well, being a, uh, a conspiratorialist, uh, the, uh, I think this should be assigned to the, uh, uh, to Patty's committee uh, to uh, make, make a recommendation and kind of maybe just a little outline of what we ought to do and how long it would ideally be and uh, and then think about it being the form, uh, in, the initial presentation would be in the form of a public meeting, uh, which could either be virtual like this or could be in, in person uh, this summer. And you know we might actually, depending on what our schedule looks like this summer, add a, an additional meeting uh, to, to do this. Donna's got her hand. Well, we've got Kim is next and then Lynn and then Donna. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think what you're all saying. So Patty, you were mentioning that you guys have a PR problem. So to me, the best way to convey who you are and and relate to the public is just give a presentation, um, as Pam said and Peter said, and have a like a little dog and pony show and and do it, I think, for ease sake like a Zoom session or a webinar. Um, you could each introduce yourselves, who you are, if how often you're on island, um, how what part of the island you're from. Um, and Peter, you had mentioned that you're in the cliff area and you don't know that you have an organized organization. Well, I live in town and I don't know of, of a civic group that we have. So if you were addressing, we do? Yeah. Yeah. It's called the Nantucket Town Association. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've attended that once or twice. Yeah. yeah. So, I, and I'm, I'll confess, I'm not very yeah. well versed in government and all the proceedings and how these things work. But um, so if you were to, if you were to present to that group, 
like I, for instance, wouldn't even know to go and hear you guys. Um, so I guess I think it would be broader reaching if you just did something and anybody could come to it. And it would be easier for you guys too, because you wouldn't have to go to all these individual um, associations. You could just do one webinar and advertise it in the current and the inky or wherever and um, or on the radio. And um, then anybody who is interested in finding out more about you could just attend that. Yeah. Good. Peter, I, I apologize. I've got some things come up and I have to leave a little bit early. Okay. Yeah, and I think we're we're kind of getting toward the witching hour in any event. Uh, uh, Finn's got her hand up still. So, yeah, sorry. I you have to remember each civic association, especially the big ones, have a very vibrant either newsletter or um, email communication. So I would start with a well thought out introduction to who we are and what we do and um, follow up from there so that they can just share that with their membership. So if you look at um, Nantucket Civic League, there are 2000 members. So it's a pretty good start if you get all the associations, which most of them also have a website or a Facebook page, easy to find, easy to communicate with the president, but also the easiest is to um, go to Peter Morrison and Charlie Stott and say, we really want some more coordination between the two so people know that we're here to serve you. That's it. I did. I talked to them, I can't remember which one, but they were very open to it. They, the more we talk with each other, they seemed very amenable to it. Yeah, I think in the past, uh, in the past would mean like five years ago or so or more, um, that the civic the civic league is the entity that sponsors that uh, 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 meeting at the Athenaeum each year, isn't it? The that town council is yeah. at and all that. In the past, that used to be co-sponsored by our group and the civic league, um, and that was when Bill Sherman was uh, active in this committee uh, because uh, Bill yes. really, you know, had very very uh, you know a foot in the town and a foot in the non-resident taxpayers, because I think he had been, you know, a, a resident at times and non-resident at times. And it, it might be well to uh, investigate um, uh, re, uh, reigniting the association that uh, that used to be uh, found at that meeting. Uh, and I know uh, Gary and I were at the meeting this year uh, and I've attended it several times, but uh, it's been more to, been more to learn, yeah. you know, learn what other people have to say. So, uh, did anybody else have a comment? I think this has been, yes. a very, you know, uh, I do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, Patty, I, um, I live in town and I was not aware of all of these organizations. So I appreciate your sharing 26. That's amazing. Um, but as far as the town goes, I'd be happy if there's something going on in the summer, I'd volunteer once we have uh, an approach that we want to use uniformly, I'd be happy to, um, to meet and uh, address the uh, Nantucket Town Association, I for one. So keep Thank me you. in mind, you know, I think there are di many different approaches that we can use to and present a unified um approach presentation to the island and we can do it many different ways not just one way thank you well one of our challenges will be in this uh, town council study committee to have a uh, uh, to come up with what it is that we think we ought to be in the new form of government if it's adopted and so that can be part of the discipline and figuring out the answer to this question. Perhaps we could devote a meeting to that, yeah. discuss the approaches and discuss also how we want to um, approach the uh, TCSC. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Peter, oh, yeah. I just have a comment. Um, I don't quite agree that people don't know who we are anymore. You know, when you read the Inky this morning and coming to our meeting, this Zoom meeting, 
is on the Inky's recommended to-do list. All that means to me is that our PR committee, which I thank them for, is doing a fabulous job. We've never had so much publicity. We've never had so much recognition. They're doing <laughs> a great job. Agreed. Agreed. Go to these civic association meetings, that's fine, but I, I don't think we're little known anymore. The articles that you've written to the Yankee talking about us and the fact that all of these these electronic newsletters are talking about our meetings and what's on the subject. I think the PR pe people are doing a great job. Now, there's one other issue I wanted to mention that has nothing to do with what I just said, and that is um, we've been holding all these meetings on Zoom and they work great. But my recollection is that uh, in April, the state's Zoom laws uh, that are put, uh, the emergency laws uh, will expire. And I don't know whether or not they will extend them so that we will be able to continue in the future having Zoom only meetings. Uh, you know, the last I saw was the governor's uh, emergency order was extended until I think late April uh, or early May in 2024. And it's worked great for us, but I don't know what the future holds if we're going to be forced to start having in-person meetings again uh, solely in order to do our normal business. I guess we ought to check with Libby Gibson to see whether or not um, they think the governor's emergency rule to permit these I hybrid meetings will it. be extended. Yeah, I, I, that, I, I will check on that. My recollection is that this went from being an emergency to uh, an actual statute that permitted this, but not, not forever, for a number of years. Um, and, you know, the legislature approved that, but um, I'm not, you know, I'll have to go check and see what the situation is. Can I just interrupt one minute? I just want to yeah. say Steve is the only person involved with all those um, notices to all of the publications. He's done just all the work. He's wonderful. And, and the fact that he, when they didn't put in this latest one, he, he went back to him and said, how come or whatever. And what started this conversation was the fact that one, I can't remember if it was the current or the, the other one, um, they break. one of the publishers came back and said, well, we don't really want to do too much with political organizations. And it's like, oh my gosh, he doesn't understand what this committee is. So that's where this whole idea of well, we more work to do to make people understand what we are and what we are not. And yeah. So, so they uh, just to follow up on your story very briefly, uh, I think Steve uh, at the end of the, a day or so ago said uh, what Patty just said, and it was about Daybreak Nantucket, mm -hmm. and they offered us the great uh, great opportunity to advertise uh, for money in their uh, <laughs> you know in their electronic uh, newsletter, uh, and he went back to them and explained that you no know, we're a, a official government committee and blah 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 and lo and behold this morning there it was first thing this morning and um, uh, the, probably the best uh, uh, notice that of our meeting of any of the notices that have been published I would agree yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and so just just so you know the, I just looked up the law and it's extended through March 31st 2025 yes oh, 2025 right right okay yeah um, I'd just like to make a quick comment. The um, the PR committee is very new. Um, Patty, what has it been? Uh, not even a year? A year. Right. A year old. Yeah. So this yeah. is all very new for us. And it's moving along beautifully. So thank you, you Patty. Right. Yes, you're very much involved. Of course, Steve and is the one that's that's Steve as well. PR yeah. Yeah. He's not here to hear you say that, but thank you, Donna. <laughs> Pass it along. <laughs> his, ear, his ears are ringing wherever they are. Yes. Uh, right now uh so i guess i think the are there any other public comments uh and kimberly thanks a lot for um getting this discussion started um any other public comments 
any unanticipated items uh, that we should be considering or and I, I just so want to give my hand is up. Yeah. Oh. My hand is always up. Thank you guys right. for hearing me out and listening to me. And so public comments, I'm not sure if this is a the proper time and place to bring this in, but you were talking about construction. Can I just make a comment about sure. that? Sure. Uh, I think it shouldn't be addressed just during the summer hours because I want to lend a different perspective because I'm here year round. And if we limit it during the summer hours, it means it's going to be more during the winter months. Um, and I've owned my house for six years now, and there has not been a single winter when I have not had massive construction going on around me. Um, I live on a quiet little street. I'm on Warren Street, and um, it's 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 really trying to hear all this noise constantly mm -hmm. to try to leave your house and you can't because there's a Tuscana truck parked out in front and they're excavating. Um, I think consideration needs to be given to year round residents as well. Okay, I, I appreciate the comment that, that this is a, we're getting into the area of nobody wants anything to go on near their house ever. And, and, and ever exactly and um uh the i think this is a an island-wide issue uh and um uh the uh, our focus you know it, our, our issues i think are island-wide too except they're typically limited to a certain group on the island um i i don't know what to suggest other than um, I just don't know what to suggest. You know, it, it's it kind of I, like I say to my kids sometimes. That's life. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm not. I'm not asking for you know you to suggest anything or or do anything no. right now. I'm just saying I think there's another perspective. It's not just during the summer hours. I think there are some year-round concerns as well. So, like I said, I don't know if this is the proper time and place to bring that up. But um, please tell me where I should if it's not here. So, so the being in town, I think the the place that I've most seen that is in the in the process of if if the project that is being worked on is uh, subject to the uh, planning board, uh, they have in the past I think put uh, conditions on various projects that require their approval as to the time of year. That um, that construction can take place, or you know, noisy construction can take place, um, but that typically is unfortunately, you know, during the summer months. Um, uh, and, and but the the notion that at least I had, and I think many of us had, that uh, summer construction was prohibited downtown. Actually, there's no fact to back that up. From time to time, the planning board will. Um, uh, restrict uh, that uh, summer construction. Um, so the construction is just, you just know, it's, it's a it's a regular it's a regular issue. And uh, I, you know, I've my my uh, experience is that I've been on the island for I think fifteen years now, and I don't think there's been a year that there hasn't been something close by. And by the way, probably five of those years it was me. Uh, so, uh, I, I have a place I like and people around me should have places they like. And anyway, Kimberly should go to the town association in which she lives. The town, that particular area has the most stringent anti-noise restrictions of any community on the entire island. They already have that. Okay. So whatever it is, but I, you should go to your uh, town okay. association. Okay, and what was the name of that again? Peter, you mentioned it before, but I didn't write it down. I think it's called the Nantucket Town Association. Yep. Uh, can anybody confirm that? Uh, yes, and some yes. of them have an email that you can send information to, and some of them don't. Um, and if you and the, the, the Civics Association's website is broken. They don't really have one anymore, so it's very difficult to find that anymore. Oh. Um, I don't know if they've got one. Also, and if you're a year-round resident now, you should be a voter. I know. I just, I just, <laughs> I just became a year-round resident. So, um, yeah, I would like to um, eventually get to that. <laughs> so, so there may be a vote against noise here. 
Well, that, thank you all for hearing me out. And I enjoyed um, listening to all you. And um, thank you for all the work that you do. Yeah, well, thanks Thanks for coming. And you may get uh, tugged on because at town meeting, we may need people to, if they think it appropriate, to you know introduce amendments or things like that. And uh, okay. so you, we may, may be approaching you. You may. Future. Thanks. Hey, I would welcome thanks. it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, okay, so that uh, I think we're ready to adjourn. If, I have uh, one more thing, Peter, yep, really quickly. Yep. Just for those of us who's terms expire um, in 2024, that would be in June. Um, we need to decide whether we want to continue on and then submit our applications to get reappointed. And I just wanted to list, that's Peter Halley, and that's me. That is uh, Gary Beller, uh, Steve Perelman, and Bill Gardner, and Pam, according mm -hmm. to the website. Okay. So if the website's incorrect, I think there are I think we each serve for three years and there are five of us. So there, there should be five of us that, that roll over every year and we need to renew if we want to. So we need to know, I think, if you want to not renew so we can recruit or if you are renewing, then submit the paperwork. Yeah, because I suggest in. that I actually thank you very much because I thought I had another year. Um, the uh, it's something I had to, uh, I've been monitoring apparently or the, or the website's wrong, which is often is. Uh, also, just drop me or, or uh, Kathy or Peter a line. The main issue is, do you want to continue? Uh, uh, and then uh, I, in the past, I've uh, sent uh, Libby a note uh, saying that, you know, X, Y, and Z are interested in con continuing and they've been, you know, diligent participants and that sort of thing. Um, of course, I'll have to say that about myself this year, apparently. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. If we decide that we didn't get need to get sworn in in person, I don't remember what the resolution is was. On it, that. It's it, it's the issue is not whether you need to be sworn in. It was whether how you needed to be sworn in, whether you had to appear in person or whether you could uh, be sworn in online. Uh, and I can't remember exactly how that came out because I think it came out two different ways, um, depending on the day of the week. Yeah, Donna. Um, I had to be sworn in in person. When I came last summer. Yeah. Yeah. But there was some there was some discussion about that we nobody needed to be really because we're not a, we're not really a governing body or a legislative body. So that right. was I thought the, the last and I don't remember the outcome. Yeah, the only uh, official acts we have are to make recommendations. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we cannot actually enact a regulation or anything like that. Okay. So uh Ralph's that, hand is up. Hmm? Ralph's hand is up. Oh, Ralph. Hi, Ralph. Hi, Peter. Uh, this came, uh, the confusion about appointment and reappointment came up partially because of me. And uh, the first time I went to the office, I received the town office, I received a comment that I didn't need to be sworn in because of the nature of the committee. Uh, that was resolved, and the person actually doing the swearing in said, no, you, you must be sworn in. When it came time to be reappointed only a month later, the same person who gave me the wrong comment before said, no, you don't need to be sworn in a second time for a reappointment because you've already been sworn in once. And I went again to the woman at the desk who does the swearing in and said, no, that's not true. And they consulted a, a third party. <laughs> you must be sworn in each time. OK, so be that as it may. Now, since we're on the topic of membership and <clears throat> our terms coming due, I, I, I will give you a former le formal letter, Peter, but I will have to resign my term in June because we've decided to sell and relocate. So at the end of my term, uh, I will vacate. And I'm telling you now so that you have plenty of time to recruit for openings that may occur. I appreciate that. And uh, we'll be, presuming you're going to a place without all these issues. Oh, exactly, right, yeah. The, yeah. the city of Annapolis, which is where I live, yeah. and pay taxes yeah. and, and vote, yeah. um, it has no problems whatsoever, uh, except for 
incompetence and poor communication and high taxes <laughs> and other problems. And everybody wants something to be done in their backyard. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, well, sorry. I, I regret to leave, but uh, because it's been enjoyable uh, and I really am fond of all you people, but you know, I, I have to uh, take my vote elsewhere, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, sorry to see you go and uh, wish the best for you. Thank you very much. Same here, same here. Uh, okay. Any, any... Peter, will you or Kathy check on when our terms actually expire? Just yeah. to confirm whether we I, have to renew or not. Yeah, we will check. And uh, the, but given our reliability is still in question, uh, we'll, we'll check uh, and uh, see see what is said. And we can, I think, we can probably. Uh, well, since there is fewer than a quorum uh, up, uh, apparently, according to today's report, we can just send a group email to those uh, those people. Um, as to what we found out. Okay. Yep. Is there a motion to adjourn? Is it time to adjourn? Uh -huh. yeah. It is. A second. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Well, good. Thank you so much. It was Thank a you. lively, Thank wonderful you. meeting. Thanks. Bye-bye. Stay well, Thank everybody. Thank you.